In this video, I am going to show you how to properly configure a uh, work manager in order to run your work uh, periodically. I will uh, also give you some more information about the difference between a uh, regular and a unique uh, work request, uh, how to observe and cancel your work, uh, how to apply constraints and other important information. Now, the first thing that you should know is that uh, there is a difference between a work state of a one-time and a periodic work request. In this image right here, you can see uh, work states of a one-time uh, work request. And this work request uh, can be enqueued, then uh, after it uh, starts, the state will change to uh, running, and after it completes, uh, it can receive uh, either a success, failure, or cancelled state. Now, those uh, last uh, three states are uh, terminal states, because uh, when uh, either one of them is called, the work is done. However, with a periodic work request, we don't have those terminal states except cancel. And our work is basically never done, unless of course we explicitly cancel that periodic work request. Okay, so here I have prepared one demo project where I'm going to showcase how a simple periodic work request can be enqueued. So uh, I have already created here one custom uh, worker, named a custom worker of course. And uh, inside, I'm basically adding uh, one delay of uh, 10 seconds, which is um, basically simulating some kind of a work that we are doing with uh, this uh, worker. And after 10 seconds, we are just returning a successful result. Now, in our main activity here, uh, as you can see, I have uh, created here one uh, work request with a uh, periodic uh, work request builder. And uh, I have passed two parameters. The first one is the repeat interval, and the repeat interval time unit is uh, hours in this case. So it means that uh, our periodic work request will basically execute and trigger each and every hour, okay? Here we also have some uh, back of uh, criteria policy and we are uh, getting the instance of our work manager and enqueuing our work request. So let's try and uh, launch this application so we can see how will that uh, actually uh, work. We can also try to inspect this application uh, using this uh, app uh, inspection, right? So let me open that background task uh, inspector. So as you can see here, this uh, actual uh, worker is now uh, running. So uh, after 10 seconds uh, that the worker uh, has uh, finished and we have scheduled another work to trigger in a one hour, okay? So right now our uh, the, the state of our work uh, is uh, scheduled, which means that uh, after one hour, we are going to trigger that uh, same work that we have defined within our custom worker. So as simple as that. And that work will be executed uh, even if we close and uh, exit this application. So uh, there is one more additional parameter that we can use with a uh, periodic uh, work request. And that parameter is called a uh, flex interval. So let me just here uh, specify uh, one more parameter. So as you can see, flex uh, time interval. So basically a uh, flex interval is used when you have some uh, uh, time sensitive work to be executed. So for example, here uh, we're going to specify a flex uh, time interval to be uh, 15 and the flex uh, time interval uh, unit will be, uh, let's say time unit dot minutes. So basically this means that the flex time interval in this case will be 15 minutes uh, in our uh, repeat interval of a one hour. So uh, if you have set this periodic interval to be for example one hour and the flex interval 15 minutes, then it means that uh, your work can be executed uh, somewhere between uh, 45 minutes and uh, one hour, okay? Because a flex interval is used uh, at the end of the periodic uh, interval or this repeat interval. All right, so that's basically how this uh, flex uh, interval uh, actually works. Um, now, when it comes to the periodic uh, work request, uh, there is uh, one important thing here to note. So for example, let's say that you want to send some uh, analytics uh, logs uh, back to your server once a day. And that work request uh, uh, is uh, enqueued and triggered whenever you run your application. Now, it can easily happen that your work request may get duplicated. So whenever you uh, launch your application, another new work request may start and enqueue, which means that uh, you can uh, end up with uh, multiple enqueued work requests that are actually doing the same thing, not once per day, but multiple times per day. And uh, in order to avoid this duplication, you can use a unique work request. So basically, a unique work request is a specific work request that contains 
a name, a unique name, that will be used to distinguish that work request with uh, all other different requests, okay? So, for example, here if I call the NQ unique periodic work instead of this uh, NQ uh, function, then uh, we are going to here also need to pass uh, one more, uh, or actually two more parameters. The first one is the name of that uh, work, for example, uh, my work. The second one is uh, existing uh, uh, periodic work policy. So here we have uh, three different options. So we have a keep. If we select this option, then uh, it means that um, whenever we uh, trigger this um, uh, work once, and we, for example, run our application once again and trigger that once again, then if uh, a work uh, with this uh, same name already exists, then we're going to keep that uh, old one and ignore this uh, new one. And that way, we are going to avoid the duplicated uh, work requests in our application. We also have this uh, uh, update uh, policy and the cancel and the re in queue as well. In this case, I'm going to use a keep. So if we launch uh, one more um, work with this uh, same name, then we're going to just uh, keep that old one and ignore this uh, new one. OK, so uh, now, as you can see, I'm going to just remove this application. And uh, now, uh, no matter how many uh, works uh, I actually uh, trigger here. If that work uh, has the same name as the one that I have defined here, then um, all those uh, old uh, works or that one old work that already exists uh, will be able to uh, keep running. And this uh, new one that we are trying to enqueue with that same name will be ignored. Okay, so that's basically how it works. And if you're planning to use a periodic uh, work request, my suggestion is to use this um, a unique uh, periodic uh, work function because that way you're going to avoid that uh, worker duplication uh, in your work manager. All right, so uh, the next uh, thing which I want to show here is uh, how you can actually observe uh, your work and uh, check uh, in what kind of a work state your current work uh, is actually in. So for that purpose, I'm going to here uh, write one more code down below. So after we enqueue our periodic uh, work, I'm going to call here a function. So let's first call uh, work manager uh, dot uh, get a work infos or uh, get a work infos for unique work because here we're actually using a unique work so be sure to select uh, the right function here when you're selecting uh, which kind of a work you want to get uh, information for there is also one more interesting function which is called uh, get work infos uh, for unique um, work live data so this uh, live data uh, function will basically uh, trigger whenever uh, a work state of our current work changes. So for that purpose, I'm going to call this um, this function, and we need to specify the same name as our work that we want to observe. So for example, uh, my work, that's the name, right? And here I'm going to call a function observe to observe that same work. Now here we need to pass a lifecycle owner. So let's just here uh, create one variable, a lifecycle owner. Let's call here a local lifecycle owner dot current, and here just pass this. Um, a life cycle owner variable. Okay, and here of course I'm going to add a one for each loop. So for each one of those uh, elements in this uh, mutable list, I'm going to add a simple log, which will basically just a log. Let me just here add, actually add the name, a work uh, info, and let's uh, log that the uh, same variable. So work info dot state. And now whenever uh, this uh, state of our uh, work changes, then we're going to uh, trigger this lambda and we're going to log that value. So let's allow this application and also let's observe the log yet. Okay, so as you can see, our work um, uh, has been successfully enqueued. And of course, uh, we can launch this application uh, all over again. Now, uh, what I'm going to also show you here is uh, how you can cancel uh, your existing work. So we can call here a work manager uh, dot uh, uh, cancel unique work. So here we can pass the name of our unique work. There we go. And uh, let's also see what will happen. So for example, let's add here a delay of uh, five seconds. So after five seconds, I'm going to um, actually uh, call that right here. So after five seconds of enqueuing this uh, work, I'm going to wait and I'm going to cancel that uh, work. Now, the thing that you should know here is that uh, this will cancel all uh, unfinished works. But this cancellation is also a best effort policy and the work that is already executing uh, may continue to run. So let's also here now try to run this application. Let's observe the locket. And let's see whether the state of our um, uh, work here will actually change. 
Okay, so here we have received a cancel log because we have called uh, that um, uh, in front of this uh, observe uh, function. So let's try to call that uh, below this observe function. And now uh, we should be able to see here first the uh, enqueued state. And only after that, uh, we should be uh, able to see cancelled uh, after five seconds. Okay, so enqueued and cancelled. There you go. So that's how you can uh, observe your uh, uh, work state of your work and how you can also cancel that same work uh, as well. Now, the last thing that I want to show you here in this video is also how to add and specify uh, certain constraints that uh, needs to be met in order for your work to be actually uh, up and running. Now, uh, work constraints uh, will basically ensure that uh, your work uh, is deferred until uh, optimal conditions are met. So there are a couple of different uh, constraints uh, categories that you can use. So there is a network type, a battery not low, requires uh, charging, device idle, and a storage not low as well. So for example, what we can do, we can now go back to our application. Here we can just define uh, one variable. And here, for example, we can just uh, create one uh, simple constraint of a network type, in this case, uh, unmetered. And we have also specified here uh, set requires a charging to true. So if we now specify these constraints uh, right here, let me just here uh, go to this periodic uh, work request. And before we build that, let's specify uh, constraints. So set constraints equal to constraints. And this is how you actually define your uh, work uh, constraints that uh, needs to be met uh, if you uh, want your work to be actually uh, up and running uh, in the background. And there you go. So that's uh, everything I wanted to share with you in this video about uh, a periodic uh, work request. So I hope that you have now understood how this one uh, actually works. Uh, you have learned how to actually run uh, in a uh, unique uh, periodic uh, work request so that you uh, can avoid uh, uh, work duplication in your application. You have also learned how you can easily observe uh, that uh, work state of your uh, work, how you can cancel your work and even uh, add some uh, work constraints as well. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment down below. And of course, uh, be sure to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that will be all. God, oh my God, if I die, I'm a legend when they lay me down to rest.